Right, this is the Silvercrest 5 inch gauge British Rail Stainer Class 4. Uh, firstly, I'll, I'll take a walk around the engine and um, I'll show you all the features and describe the controls. So, starting at the back, um, there's a working bunker tank which is balanced from the side tanks. So, working forward, this is the boiler blowdown valve, anti clockwise to open, clockwise to close. Left hand side tank contains the hand pump, which is in there, a removable handle. Displacement lubricator um, is filled with heavy grade steam oil before a run. When you finish running, siphon out the, the residue, which will be a mixture of sort of mucky oil and water. Uh, you can get that out with a syringe and then refill with steam oil. Uh, moving forward, cylinder drain cocks which are operated by a single steam cylinder which operates this small crank and then there's two poppet valves. Uh, we'll show you those working a bit later. Moving round we've got a steam blower on a steam raising fan, just an electric fan raising steam. Right hand side tank is just purely water so the left side tank is, is water and the oil tank, the right side tank is just purely for water. Uh, injector fitted underneath on the right hand side and then coming to the cab starting from the left screw reverser, clockwise is forward, forward gear and anti-clockwise is reverse regulator, correct British Rail pattern push-pull regulator handle pull it out to open the throttle boiler pressure gauge then the first um, first valve on the turret is an isolator valve for the drain cocks the, the steam operated drain cocks two position valve open and closed to make it better for boiler testing there's a, an isolation valve so you can turn that off in case it leaks a bit next going across is the whistle valve then the blower valve then the injector steam valve and then the one on the right is the isolator valve for the steam brake valve again to turn off during boiler test. Two water gauges, blow downs on the water gauges and then down here is the bypass valve for the axle driven pump anti-clockwise to open which doesn't deliver to the boiler. When it's anti-clockwise it's delivering the water back to the tank and then that valve is the uh, water valve for the injector. Right, to steam the engine, first thing is to fill the boiler two-thirds of a glass of water. Now you can either do that using the hand pump which is a bit long-winded or you can take a safety valve out and fill it with a hose or you can make an attachment and, and back fill it through the blowdown valve. Open the blowdown valve and just pressurise water up through the bottom. Now fill the firebox three-quarters full with barbecue charcoal soaked in paraffin. Uh, not lump wood charcoal, uh, sorry, not um, briquettes, but lump wood, which is softer. Uh, then blow along. You need to pull the blower off the chimney before you put the lighted charcoal in because otherwise it will just suck the flame off it. Having lit the fire, uh, let the charcoal fire establish uh, just for two or three minutes and then we'll sprinkle some coal on the top. Uh, the coal we use is, uh, we, we buy it from Signal Fuels and it's, uh, it's proper well steam coal and it's, uh, they describe it as beans so it's lumps about the size of your thumb a bit of a sprinkling all over the top almost straight away while the fire's building itself up, lighting um, go around every lubrication point on the outside of the engine and inside where the water pump is centric is a bit of oil everywhere on the piston rod and on the valve rod as well and on the crosshead 
dive bar slides. They put it in for the small end. Incidentally, the blower, the electric blower, is uh, an old car heater motor, 12 volt heater motor, with a homemade fan. Uh, you can buy ready-made blowers, but they're, they're really, they're too small. You need something fairly substantial like that. Okay, we've got fairly decent fire, uh, up to the fire hole ring. Uh, it's burning through nicely. Pressure's at 30, 35 pounds, so it's okay to open the steam blower now. So you open the live steam blower, remove your electric fan, and the pressure will rise quite quickly. Just turn the blower down just so it comes up slowly. Right, if you look at the water levels now, because the engine's now in steam, it's got 90 pounds, I haven't put any more water in, but what started as two thirds of the glass is now almost a full glass, which is a little bit too high really. So it's just to show how much the water expands. The first thing to test before you run is the injector. Turn the water on, you see the water running out the side. You turn the steam on, just slowly and the injector will pick up. Right, as soon as the drains are open, condensate is being cleared out the cylinders. It's not easy to do it uh, gently on a rolling road, but on the track it will be much more sedate. I would run for probably three or four hundred yards of the drain so I can see the cylinders are really nice and hot. And then it's just a quarter turn from the valve and they'll close. Close the axle pump bypass valve. You can hear it feeding the boiler. Drains can be quite slow to close, but they will close. Uh, they're just sticky from the oil in the years. It's a bit wet at the overflow, just tuck the water back at top. Just trim it back to it. It's dry, and it's feeding dry.
when you're running, uh, it's a little high that water. I would try and maintain it about two thirds of the glass because uh, you don't want to prime the engine to damage the cylinders. So I've hooked the grate bar out with a poker and then pull it out with the pliers. I mean, needless to say, it's hot. And the second one. They're just straight grates, so it doesn't matter which way up they go. But there is a cutout which goes to the side at the front. Right, having taken the, drawn the fire out, and open the blowdown valve, not more than 30 psi in the boiler. It's dead here and it. That'll take any sediment out of the bottom and make the engine a lot lighter to pick up. Okay. Huh? 